What's up everyone? We are back with a tips and tricks video and with the new update to how dust works when sending ships out of King's March. So hit that like, let me know you like these tips videos and let's get into it. Now dust scaling in the update now has more of a flat scaling instead of a multiplier, but it seems the strategy so far as I've tested it is the same. I feel like I'm getting less divines, but I'm getting more chaos now. I don't know if it's just because it's only been, you know, um, a day or so before while I've been trying this but the strategy for that is still that I'm using I sent about 2,000 of everything remember you can copy this to your clipboard just put 2,000 of everything now the way dust works now is the shipment value the dust from the original shipment value so 1800 before 1800,000 or 180,000 before you do any dust it'll only scale well up until 180,000 now, should you send this much with every shipment? No, you should not. But you should never send more dust than this because it falls off incredibly hard. You have to keep in mind that if you are really cranking it, you're going to bed and you just want a full send, don't send more than the original shipment value or it's going to screw you over and not be worth it. That being said, I still only send maybe 20,000, 10 to 20,000 of dust to the nearest port every single time while I am playing and then overnight, I will just send it to Kalkur. Now, this one is only about four minutes longer if you have a fully upgraded port, which is fine also. And this is one I would probably should want to send to because it has a pumpkin multiplier and I'm sending pumpkins anyways. You also always want to be sending, if you can, the things that it needs. So if, again, if I'm sending to this port, it needs some Verisium to complete the full rotation, uh, but I do not have Verisium at the moment. So it doesn't really matter. So I'm going to select this because it's going to give me some extra pumpkins. And why not? I'll give them some bismuth too. Not get crazy. Get a little bit of a bonus there. Set sail. Do the same for my other ones. You don't have to have three ships going all the time. Especially if you're having a hard time keeping up with gold. But obviously it is ideal. Now sending 2,000 at a time. Even with full level 10 farmers. You are not going to be able to keep up with that. Keep that in mind. You have to be sending a little bit lower value. This seems to be the strategy that's working for me. And a lot of people agree with me on. Secondly, since we're sending so many crops because that's what gives you the currency, you are going to want to upgrade your farm first, ideally all the way to the max because the top level of it gives you an extra speed increase. Now, the way I do it during the day depends on what I need. That one port needs a lot of pumpkins, so I did two pumpkins and a couple of the other ones of corn, wheat, um, or gourd. Uh, I don't think I have any blue xanth. I do have a blue xanthemum. Now, when I go to bed at night, I will usually put one of each of the four crops and then i will put two blue xanthemums on the end because they take the longest to kind of try to even it out so when i wake up in the morning i have a good 10 to twenty thousand of the crops to spend on the first few days shipment of the day now obviously if you're only playing a couple times a week you're gonna have a lot more to send that two thousand crop thing might be a joke to you you might be able to send four thousand of each crop and pump the dust up by a decent amount now, with mappers and shipments that give you items, if they are not good, and I don't suggest checking every item, what you can do is kind of just grab the ones that you can disenchant before you get rid of everything else. And then once your inventory is full, immediately throw all of that into the disenchanter. Now, a great tip with the disenchanting is that once you start throwing a lot of items in here, you will notice that there is a dust value for each one of them. Now, the dust value is going to change with if there's any quality on the item, uh, what kind of base mod uh, base item it is and also with the tier of rolls now if you are going through and you put a bunch of items in here i usually just take mostly the rings amulets belts and things that take up a lower inventory space if i put a bunch of armors in here and a bunch of weapons uh large you know six three by three weapons it's going to fill this up incredibly quick and i wanted to do it over time i don't want to keep filling it so i prioritize putting rings belts and amulets into the disenchanter whenever I get them. Once you get everything full, check the dust thing real quick. You don't have to check every item whenever you are mapping, but the ones you put in here, some of them will have an abnormally high dust thing. Just look at the number. If it's around 9,000 or higher, check the item for sure, because that means it probably rolled a lot of tier one, tier two mods. The other day I put a pair of boots in here. I did not check them, glanced over it. It had a 14,000 dust a disenchant uh, cost. So I looked at it at five T1 mods and a tier two, and they were very good boots. They were, I think like, if they would have rolled just chaos res extra, it would have been 
um, incredibly crazy boots that probably would have been 10 to 15 to buy. So you can use the dust value of stuff to second guess and price check the stuff that you're putting in here. If it's high, I'd say around 8,000 plus, 9,000 plus, double check it and give it a little bit of a closer look. So you don't have to go through and just stare at everything you get from the ports and your mappers or you're going to go insane. With the mappers in general, once you start getting better and better mappers, they are without a doubt the most expensive things to run in all of King's March. That can be kind of frustrating. So if it is late at night and you are starting to feel that gold starvation, you're like, I want to go to bed. I want to make sure my farmers keep going and my town keeps working while I'm sleeping that I've been worried about it. Shut your mappers off for the last, you know, hour or two hours you're playing so you can save up some gold because they are incredibly expensive. You also want to prioritize doing maps that they have a higher chance of 100%ing. So when you see a new map, yes, the 1% chance for an Atlas Run to be permanently killed is what you're always striving for, but check their expected map completion. Around 70 to 100% is perfectly fine. Uh, most of the time they will 100% those. Uh, but if you start getting ones that are, you know, even if they say 1% chance for an Atlas Run to be permanently killed, but it says 50 to 100% map completion, Partially completed maps are absolute garbage. They do not give you nearly as much. Well, that sounds a little extreme. They still give you something, but 100%ing a map gives you a, a solid amount more. So make sure, even if you have to, do blue maps instead of rare maps or lower tier yellow maps instead of high tier yellow maps. You want the highest percentage for them to 100% it. That is much, much more important. When your workers get kidnapped, whether it's with sailing or with mapping, the sailing boss you want immunity to freeze or chill, and you want high cold resist, you can get that pretty easily with the uh, cold resist, the 100% chance to avoid being frozen by getting the Soul of the Brine King Pantheon and capturing the Captain Tanner Lightfoot. He is in the Coral Ruins map. So what you would do is you would run the Coral Ruins map no matter what tier. I don't think tier matters. I'm pretty sure tier doesn't matter. And you would take a Divine Vessel Put it in the map device with the coral runes once you beat that his soul will get trapped in here then you can right click it take it out of the map device and right click it or just right click it in general and it is going to unlock these that goes for any of these grayed out things so if i want the six percent reduced elemental damage taken if you've been hit recently i would look up where core sister of shadows boss is and what map i'd run that map with the divine vessel right click the divine vessel to open up that great area another great one especially for i believe the boss for if your mappers get kidnapped he is a fire boss so you want high fire resist and he does put burning stuff on the ground i'm assuming it's burning ground i've had this since the first time i'm running it and i don't feel like losing my mappers so i'm not going to take it off to test that theory but this is another one you capture him a five the earth scorcher with divine vessel and you are unaffected by burning ground he even gives you a little bit of a movement speed bonus last one that is pretty important is if you have space for a flask and you absolutely can you should be using a gold flask because gold drops scale with rarity so grab a gold flask put it on use when charger is full forget about it uh you can hit it if you want i don't suggest it just put an enchant in it with some baubles on your crafting bench use when charges reach full that's going to give you a decent amount more gold all right guys so that's the only ones i can think of off the top of my head i just wanted to make a real quick video say some things about the update some things that might help you guys out uh, i'll probably do another one of these once some more stuff comes to mind I'm sure after I edit and post this, within five minutes, I'll remember another tip. So I'll start writing them down and helping the people out that want it. So leave a like and a comment. Let me know how you're liking the league. Let me know what you think about the update if you've been sending ports out and the kinds of stuff you've been getting back compared to the stuff you used to get. Uh, make sure you join our Discord and get subscribed over on Twitch.tv. So I say fun talk. It helps a ton. And we will catch you on the next one.